Дорогие зрители и участники, технологические стартапы и предприниматели, подобно космическим метеорам и кометам, разрезают пространство и время, преодолевая миллиарды парсеков сквозь звездные ветра, туманы протозвездного вещества, притяжение черных дыр, вспышки сверхновых и ловушки темной материи, стремятся выйти на все более высокую орбиту. Стартап Village 2021 is dedicated to the flight of Yuri Gagarin, which was a breakthrough of humankind to space. The significance is greater than can be seen, both for studying the space and the development of science and technologies, which is obvious. The penetration of space is expanding our understanding and, of course, enriches our science and culture. Digital materials, the next ascension on a border road to world, creation of new materials has been and remains one of the greatest achievements of all times, as new materials have played a crucial role in the growth, welfare, safety and quality of human life from the beginning of times until today. The best practices of creating new materials can the modeling and machine education and studying accelerate the speed of entering the market? Do the development of engineering affect the new business models? We will discuss it during the session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Digital and materials session is commencing. As if the way we are sitting is going to affect the result. We are starting the session, digital and materials. Okay, we can start, yes? Great. Dear colleagues, we are starting this session, Digital and Materials, at the boundary between the two worlds. My name is Alexander Fertman. I'm the Director on Science and Technologies of the End Education of Skolkova. Our experts, Alexander Alek Lysak, Director General of uh, TEN Group, Anton Rizantsev, Director General and Founder of many companies, including the CTO company in Novosibirsk and Professor of Skolkova Institute of Science and Technologies, Alexander Karsunsky. Good day. Good day, dear colleagues who are here with us, dear colleagues who are online with us. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most relevant topics here and now. Everybody is involved in uh, digitalization, as if material world has disappeared, but materials are still here and now. Everything which surrounds us is made of materials. The initial materials, the ones which we are used to, metals, wood, polymers, also we are talking about recycled materials, right beside us. On the startup bazaar, we can see great examples of what can be done using the wastes. But the field and industry of the materials has been fighting against the digitalization for quite some time. I have been speaking to material experts, and they have been talking about the fact that new materials have been existing for 15, 20 years, and uh, new materials aren't going to be created. But digitalization is obvious, and during the last years, we could already see that there is another field which was included by Luke's research into the list, a short list of the world trends. Material informatics, that's the list. How the digits are living with the, alongside the materials. 
and the products made of materials, how it lives inside the material world. Can we accelerate the development of materials? What are the trends in the field of materials and how digitalization affects them? I would like to ask Professor Karsunsky to start. Thank you, Alexander. This is a very interesting topic indeed, and I think it should be viewed in the context of practice, engineering practice in the material science. As an example, I would like to show, share the experience of working with Rolls-Royce, my own experience. It's creating the aviation engines, starting from the post-World War II world. I have been working with them for quite some time, 20 or 30 years. This is a business which exists due to the development of new materials which help them to build a more powerful and more efficient engines, more eco-friendly engines. However, this field is very conservative and it's quite obvious why. If you are responsible for dozens of thousands of passengers who might be in the air every minute and every hour of every day. So right now, due to COVID-19, of course, it might have been reduced. But anyhow, at every second in time, dozens of thousands of people are in the air due to travels. And everything depends on the materials. That is why I would like to say that innov innovations are not that relevant here now, because re reliability is the first factor which is demanded. And of course, if we talk about pharmaceuticals, we would like to say that uh, the new products and new medical products are being tested for dozens of years in order to provide their reliability. Although we can see that the digitalization is moving across the world, it is impossible to accelerate this process. However, digitalization gives us other opportunities which are very important. For example, the nickel alloy which are used in creating the engines contains about 20-25 components. Optimizing this amount is an art. And why do I call it art? It demands knowledge, it demands experience, and in the end, it demands the feeling, the human feeling. And sometimes it gets a bit too much. And of course, digitalization of the processes of screening, of the selection of the materials for specific applications gives us an opportunity to go with the certification in a more successful way, not in a more fast way. And we are looking for new forms. That's the most important. And that is what we are doing in Skoltech and in Oxford with our colleagues. What does the digitalization give us? In order to create a context for it, I would like to draw another example of a very important Oxford scientist who was a microscopist. When the microscopes appeared and were created, they gave us a chance to see the structure of metals, of bio-tissues, and due to the fact that we couldn't save this picture, we had to have both the notion of artist and the experimentator. So, and of course, in order to capture this picture, we had to draw it. And when the photography appeared, it was possible to capture the picture in an automatic way. So, and it's quite clear that afterwards, when that image became digital, you, you could also it also became possible to manipulate it. You could print it, and you, other options also became available. So with a digital image, you can deeply study uh, intensity, distributions, you can process, and you can uh, get things from that image that you cannot even see with your eye. So we see a similar evolution in material engineering, we digitalize all the parameters and test results. Uh, microscope, 
uh, or structural analysis, all that information can be put together. And then what do you do with it going forward? That's up to the scientists, to the researchers. And artificial intelligence becomes part of it. It's part of the process. And in that way, this description of a class of materials in a digital way, when it becomes a digital entity, it gives us a chance to streamline things. Let me add one more thing before my colleagues have a chance to comment on this. This initiative was very popular at some uh, material genome. That's what it was called. It's a misnomer because a genome is a concentrated brief uh, record of instructions how uh, a body, an organism can be reproduced from a couple of cells. So that kind of record for materials cannot be obtained most likely. At least we haven't been able to do it. And the, and the reason being materials are very hierarchical in their structure. Their properties uh, arise at different scales. We have some smaller scale properties like uh, we have crystals and that level, atom distribution and distances between them. When we go from that level to uh, larger levels, so for engineering applications, so that requires movement at multiple levels, and each level, uh, physical laws, uh, different physical laws are active or prevail. So that means, so my uh, microstructure description will not suffice, even if when we look at it only at the a at atomic level. So that's what uh, material science is all about. And just to complete, complete with this uh, analogy, if we compare it to genome uh, engineering and medicine, so genome engineering um, did not cancel uh, the necessity to look at the human person as a whole. And one more thought that I wanted to share. We will come back to you, Alexander. But I have a very specific question. From my experience, one of the most complicated materials for modeling was steel. I don't know if the situation has changed. We will hear about composite materials as well, among other things. But one of the startups with whom I've been in conversation for quite some time, they wanted to mark, they wanted to um, label, uh, atom labeling for metal. So, and one of their clients said, can you have a digital twin, how those atoms will impact the metal, how life cycle of that material will be affected in different operational modes. So can you tell us in a, in a nutshell if that's possible? Y yes, but with some caveats. I. So I have a special uh, perspective on digital twins. Supposedly, you can have uh, one a digital twin of a sophisticated uh, object. It, it is possible if your digital twin has a stochastic and statistical uh, uh, properties. So you need to have a whole generation of digital twins. So basically, in principle, so we can move from atomic properties to macro properties and model all of that. Okay, we move to a more fashionable topic, composite materials. And I will ask Anton to provide some examples of how digitalization helps develop final products. There are two industries out there, composite materials and additive technologies, additive production, where material of the final product radic is radically different from materials which are used before production. And how each situation is modeled 
how digital, digital technologies can help, how can improve properties of composite materials. So uh, is it possible, Anton? Uh, hello. Thank you very much for being there. Of course, I'll be uh, telling about our industry. I'll be talking about indus engines. And to follow up on Alexander's speech, we also optimized uh, gamma content for optimal uh, properties for blades uh, that were developed by additive technology. So digital technologies really help. There are two examples I would like to cite. Anton will listen. So digital technologies do help. You can model the process and reduce the time, or digital technologies help to monitor processes. Both are true digital technologies when we have a model of those uh, gamma phases depending on heat thermal treatment. So that helped us to find solutions. And consequently, two examples very much opposite to each other. In 2010, when in Russia we were learning to use uh, carbon pl plastics for um, frames of airplanes, so for four years a small team worked on that, on that modeling. So they used uh, empirical models, very simplified models when we for properties and destructions of carbon plastics. So the, you could do that in half a year at the time. And there were a colossal number of samples were produced. So we, if, you, if, if samples had been used, probably you, could, you would have been able to do it faster. And when you have a composite wing, so before you uh, before you actually uh, destroy them and you calibrate it, uh, then when you really know, but and that also helped to improve the model. So the conclusion is that modeling cannot replace empirical approaches, but empirical em approaches can be greatly improved thanks to the models. So we were part of that process and we know it very well. When investors or producers of new materials come to our design bureau, so they are kind of a threat to us, especially when we talk about uh, frames for airplanes where it's about safety of people. So we are very conservative. So we don't have any uh, models to calculate their, their longevity, their durability, so in terms of defect uh, identification, etc., so develop those models to have a digital passport of materials. So digital technologies will be needed for that. Thank you, Anton, for that. So on this, path, uh, on this point, I would like to switch to this other topic. We we said that additive technologies and also composite materials, when they uh, enter those d comp complicated industries such as aviation, so that slowed down their development. I know that you did a lot at the Technopark to find more calm and peaceful ways to use, more peaceful ways to use those technologies. So now composite materials and, and additive technologies are inseparable. So can you tell us, please, if, if there's this integration of digital technologies with your, because you work in the market, so how digitalization of materials is important, whether it's important for you. Thank you for that, Alexander. Let me uh, describe that in a nutshell in what I represent here. So I'm quite um, perpendicular to the two previous um, projects because we are a, start, a startup studio. We, d we don't invest in digital or IT. We work with hardware. We work with hardware startups. And Alexander is right. In fact, uh, digital technologies have a lot of impact. 
we use a 30 year cycle of investments in IT technologies and and utilization costs are down greatly and computational costs are down compared to what we had 20 years ago so the software which works in 3D today it was impossible 20 years ago. You needed to have special service for that, but now you use your laptop for it. So modeling life cycle of a composite material, calculating at a macro level, now it is possible. So in that respect, our startups are not aiming at such uh, industries as an automotive one or um, aviation or aerospace because um, some of those rules were written in blood, so to speak. But if we talk about lithium-ion batteries, some, sometimes they can explode. So, they, so the threat is quite real, even compared to aviation. So if you have 1,000 of those explosions, it's, uh, the damage can be equal to one plane falling so for the automotive industry, it can be quite dangerous and, and the, the scale is different. So it's a mass scale production. So, so this startup, uh, when, we be, when it, they develop uh, a more sophisticated material, they take another iteration of battery management system, they certify it and then they give it to someone and they use it for energy accumulation. So those iteration um, are much smaller. So that means that the quantum of investment is also smaller, yes. So the quantum of investments is in, correlates to that um, iteration. So you do that and then you're done. But when you uh, develop an accumulator, you can spend a million dollars or a couple million dollars and then take it to the market. So, so it's, uh, it's mostly about something else. It's not about predicting properties, but about tracing properties. Like Professor said, the sto stochastic models, when you have multiple digital twins and you trace them, so digitalization is needed to capture that. So to capture data, not so much to model the future. We, ha we have different startups. And last year, when we talked about materials with the founder of Kintec Group, uh, Pat Professor Patapkin, and so he's modeling future, and he offers some options how to do it. But those startups are much fewer compared to startups who really uh, test it and try it. So Mr. Potapkin has one startup and whose clients are global companies, GE, Volkswagen, Tesla. So they're as large as whole states in terms of their R&D capabilities. So he's not producing materials, no. He's not making materials, he's not making products, but he's modeling processes of material productions to resolve some of those problems, St stability of quality, and also replicability. So if you follow recommendations that model provides, most likely you'll be able to do better. So I have this question for you, Alexander. Since you recalled the program material genome, its consequences were quite interesting. One of the most memorable, in, at least in Russia, uh, was that after uh, some lessons were learned, about 30 percent of uh, time for the material design so it was done without um, fixing on a specific materials. Moreover, Anton said for designer, the innovator is the main threat. But it can be even worse when the designer has a chance to set 
requirements for that material. So is that a reality or is it just a fantasy? So just to put more, is a smoke screen? I think it's a, it is a reality. And as a reality, it should be treated seriously and responsibly in this respect. Traditional engineering design supposed the use of existing materials which are described, tested, they have some properties. And so designers had to properly incorporate them in their design structure. Innovations may happen at different levels. One of the innovative methods is that we take an existing design and we see how what materials can be replaced for with cheaper or with more durable materials and there and there's some information bases like Cambridge mat materials lecture Mike Cashby um, if a well-known person created it so he preached that idea that that information on materials should be added to a database and so you can select the right material when you have a, right, a range of properties or a criteria so that exists but you should treat it carefully because materials as another Cambridge professor said so materials are like people so when you their defects make them interesting so when you say that steel has this module or this uh, a threshold of elasticity so that doesn't tell you much because it depends on how it was developed and also how it was, has been operated and their properties evolve throughout their life cycle so when we talk about uh, a discovery of this design process to include broader classes, more varied options of materials, this is something that should be taken responsibly. And I think that such a movement is taking place and it requires a specific level of knowledge and education of designers so they should be aware uh, about possibilities that exist. Thank you very much. In fact, when we talk about digital twins, that you promised to say a few words, so to what extent the material itself can be included in the process of optimization, in the process of modeling? Uh, let me tell you one thing. We live in a stochastic world, like the colleague mentioned the fact that throughout a month uh, a thousand cars may start having some problems. But this, this is a process with some chance at play and a stochastic problem. And from all this range, we oftentimes are interested in extreme um, values so let's say the strength of a product is distributed uh, you know following gauss distribution but they have tails on both ends and we are especially concerned where the strength of that product is down below allowable limit so we're not just interested in the statistics but we're st interested in the statistics on extremes if we want to ensure reliability and safety. So the topic of my startup, the theme of my startup, let's, if I have a, a, the idea of a startup, that would be to equip digitalized twins, to equip digital twins with, of materials with statistical descriptions so we would be able to reliably evaluate their properties in terms of uh, failure. And one more thing, 
So we have a combinatory material science. If you want to select an alloy for a large number of options, you simply take up a task of combinating those things upon yourselves and then you will need to understand what characteristics are covered by them and uh, we have a very elegant solution for that. Just imagine three parts phase diagrams. So, I'm sorry, maybe some, th some people do not know what phase diagram is, so I will explain it because the people are uh, will understand this. So, and uh, you have a triangle and you have three different components. So, different uh, metals, aluminum, titan and nickel. So, you have the special coating for this and uh, one will be on one end and uh, as soon as you move across the triangle you will have the concentration going to zero and that goes with every component. Then you take this triangle and you anneal it in order for all the components to react and in the end you have a physical object inside which you will have all possible composites of these three parts alloy. Then you have a special ray and uh, each geometrical po point which has different concentration is going to show the crystallic uh, composite. Beautiful? Indeed. This is uh, combinatory material science. Indeed. I have seen something like that when working with uh, medicine, medical products, but I haven't seen it, so when working with uh, materials. Thank you very much. Anton, you have experience of working with composite materials, as well as other experiences. In order to model the key factor, we need to use the database. Our foreign and Western partners and friends have spent dozens of years in order to compose these databases together and to validate them. Outside the nuclear and space program, we have gathered few data about the materials and how they interact in different conditions. Does the situation change somehow? Can we count on using separate materials, new materials, to create a database which can be a foundation for our work? Anton, I do not hear you. Oh, you hear me now, right? Yes. Good. Uh, initially, humankind has been looking through one book only, let's say aviation materials only and all the thermal processing process items. Unfortunately, we are losing connection with Anton really hope that he will refresh and come back to us. Okay, Oleg, you have whispered to me that we can have several examples of additive technologies to build upon what has been said by Karsunsky Alexander. Well, judging by our practice, G Additive has bought a startup which is called Concept Laser. So it's a real startup. It didn't have much revenue. So they have been doing the uh, Concert Plaza has been doing cars. So this is most uh, industrial 3D printer because uh, it depends on fields. Geos is more aviational one. So requirements to the quality, to the repeatability, and so on. So NG just created a printer which can be used in general situations. We had the second generation and we had the third and fourth generation. We took the same modes, the same materials, and it didn't work. It seems to be that everything is the same. So GE told us about all the settings, all the principles of modeling. We have checked everything. So, but, uh, and it took several iterations to manage to print the samples to do the job. Speaking of modeling, they still stay, say that everything is the same, but it got better. They just changed the technology of scanning a bit, changed the principle of uh, laminar streams of argon and so on. Everything is going to be just the same, but even better. Yeah, but the result isn't the same. Yeah, although the company which is printing like this is doing best work and mo most of the work in country. So the printer goes according to the schedule and so on. 
So I liked your picture a lot, this triangle. When you can model things, you understand things, and uh, you will be able to model it. But I would like to show another example, an example from the product domain. We created a thing, the first one in the country, and we were on the crossroads to create a model a viable one. Of course, we needed to talk about the criteria of reliability, 15 hours of work, about two years of guarantee, 24 7 work, recharge every 15 minutes, and we were solving a question whether we should model this or we should use the testing in the field. When we thought about modeling, we decided that we will make 15 items. Each one is going to be 3 millions of rubles and let them just roll. And right now we have a situation when we have a big database. And over here I can see the request from Anton. Yes, Anton, please come back to us. Let's speak about database. Yeah, let me just say about something about database. We have the database, and what can we do with it? So who can use it in the end? Anton, so we, right now, we are not talking about the informational materials about the aviation and uh, passing to something more modern. Of course, uh, we have lots of technical processes. We have very interesting branches which can be tried. And right now, the metallurgy is uh, different. So, and uh, we have different characteristics of materials. And of course, composites are different. So we have lots of options here and now. And speaking about the database, if we are talking about some fixed values, so it is impossible to do that. This is all about the technical models and processes. We need to iterate various mo models, these digital twins and receive results and to solve multi-hierarchical database and task. This is not a book anymore. This is database of models which allows us to solve such problems here and now. So this is a live journal. Yes, indeed. So and we are not talking about some specific materials. Not to, we're not talking about the thermal processing. We have lots of options here and now and models of the technical processes which would allow to design a specific characteristics of the materials. Yes, for them to fit into specific demands. Well, it looks very promising, actually. So yes, this is a task which requires colossal resources and for efficiency and uh, computing because it's multi-hierarchical task. This is what Oleg said. Modeling becomes even more expensive than the digital testing and the economy might not be able to withstand it. So it's much more than the material testing. So Alexander, that's possible, but I would like to ask another question to all of you. I guess this is going to be the last one. In general, we can see a very bright picture of the future from the point of view of receiving new materials, new characteristics of the product. How does this affect the business models? Can we use the knowledge and experience and skills which we have accumulated in order to change the business models of the company. We can already see that, uh, let's say, BASF already does this. Formally, it's not about material science, it's a chemical company, but uh, let's face it, they are really close to each other. So Alexander is going to prove me wrong here. Okay, I actually agree with you here. Okay, Oleg, so these business models are closer to you. So let's talk about the new materials. What can they give to the business? This is a very unfair question. Why is it unfair? I would say that... So, Alexander, you are trying to confuse us a bit, because there are two sides, new materials for business, okay, new relations with the materials. Maybe the new materials can be the sources of uh, business, and the way of searching for the materials can be a new source for the business. These are two different businesses. Both of them have the right to live. The first example, DSM. It's a bit smaller than BASF, 
but during the last dozen of years, so I have been looking at them for about a dozen years. So it's called Bright Materials. The website is called Bright Materials. Live, Bright Materials for Life, and something else, I'm not sure. And the company itself, the DSM company, does the following. They are investing into R&D and into marketing. In some cases, they are developing the materials, and in some cases, they are buying the ready-made products. And they understand that their market force is much higher than anybody else. BASF is supposed to have the testing lab. You should come there and so sell it using your trademark. That's exactly what is happening with the with the materials for agriculture. Yeah, it's good that they actually did it. So, and uh, it's not Intel which had their chips there, microchips. So, yeah, and uh, to answer your question, yes, to answer your direct question, so knowledge of the characteristic of digitalization which can affect the business models, of course it can affect. Sberbank, for example, announced that they are launching their own model of their vehicles based on their subscription. So it all depends on the resource of the vehicles and the materials cannot be modeled like that. But the next step would be the knowledge about that. Yes, because as soon as we know about all the wonderful peculiarities and characteristics of the materials, which were mentioned by Alexander, and sometimes these characteristics are called defects, then the models are going to help us to understand how they're going to develop further. Alexander, yeah, it's an unfair question to you, but you are also the professor both of Skoltech and Oxford. So and uh, business models are treated as good as the interpreters in Oxford, so in the world around it. And we really hope that things are going to happen the same in Skoltech in the nearest future. But I would like to ask you, do you feel that material is changing the business around you? Indeed. In short, please. Yes, science has a notion. Solution in search of a problem. The world is developing a huge amount of uh, recipes, so to say, which are unknown to people. People do not know what to do with them. Of course, a great model would be search for the new characteristics of the materials and the comparison with the demands. This niche is not still occupied, but it's very de uh, demanded. But we're talking about the demands and requirements to the characteristics. Then the niche is going to be occupied, and it's going to be occupied very fast. Yes, the space for business work is huge, as I see it almost unlimited. It's going to be filled in very fast and very rapidly, but right now we still have a chance to do that. Yes, Anton, we have a last minute, so please conclude. I would like to look at it from another angle. We are talking about materials, but moreover, we are talking about life cycle. We are talking about the development and then the disposal of the materials. And you can see it in the field of vehicle construction. The disposal, especially if we're talking about the polymer materials, is a great issue. And we can see the tendency of transferring to the business model. We are not talking about selling the the vehicles. We're talking about uh, power for hour and material per year is uh, the new model, basically. So when we're talking about the producer and manufacturer of material, of some bumper or whatever, so we can see that he is not selling this material. He is giving it for rent. Thank you very much. And we would like to conclude that the full life cycle of the material is becoming the critical for future business. Thank you. We will discuss this next year.